Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is David Potter with um, the Director of Marketing with Luna Innovations, and very happy you're able to join us today for our webinar, Polarization and Fiber Optic Systems, How to Measure and Manage for Optimal Performance, presented by Waji Dom. Uh, before I turn it over to Waji, just a couple of housekeeping items. At the end of our webinar, we'll have a live Q&A session, so please, during the webinar, feel free to submit uh, questions using the Q&A control on your control panel in the webinar. And we'll get to as many as we can at the end of the uh, webinar. Uh, also, we'll be recording today's webinar and that will be available on demand. We'll send an email out after the webinar with information on how to access the recording, as well as a copy of the slides and um, a Q&A transcript as well. And also, as I mentioned, you may have noticed the poll question on your screen. Please do take the opportunity to fill that out and um, appreciate that. And we'll share the results with you in just a moment. Okay, so now I'd like to present our speaker today, Raji Dobb. Uh, Raji is currently product line manager here at Luna Innovations, where he provides application support and product guidance and roadmap guidance. Uh, with a strong background on Luna's general photonics product family. Waji holds uh, master's degrees in both electrical engineering and systems engineering from the University of Southern California. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Waji. Thank you, David. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Waji. Uh, I appreciate your time you took to fill uh, the uh, poll questions. Uh, we're gonna share the results uh, very quickly. Uh, okay, so very interesting. We have uh, roughly 42% from the communication industry, uh, then others. And applications, we have component testing, almost 30% between component testing and fiber sensing, 28%. This is very interesting. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to, to answer those questions and we'll go ahead and start the webinar. So the goal of this webinar is to um, give you the basic background about polarization. Uh, it's all about basic principles, um, different technologies that we have here at Luna, uh, as well as um, the many applications where uh, polarization is very important to manage and understand. Um, system designers, when they uh, design the fiber optic sensing, normally they focus on the intensity, the frequency or wavelengths or the phase um, difference between different uh, signals. However, polarization is also very important and understanding and managing polarization while uh, doing the system design, it's very important to improve the system accuracies, uh, performance and the measurement accuracy. So polarization in simple words describes the oscillation of, of the wave. Um, any wave can be uh, understood or thought of as uh, composed of two signals, one oscillating in the vertical uh, y-axis, the other one uh, along the x-axis. And this is a good example here I'm showing of a circular polarization. So there are a few terms that I, I would like to introduce about polarization so that uh, when we talk about them later on, it's easy to, to, to understand and, and connect. First one is state of polarization. So the, the pattern that the wave is, is, is traced can be linear or can be circular or can be elliptical. In most cases, when uh, the signal travels uh, along the fiber optic, um, you, you will most likely observe an elliptical polarization state. Uh, but there are linear polarization state and there is circular polarization state. And the main difference uh, is related to the phase difference between the two components and the amplitude. Um, so here I'm showing uh, a linear polarization state. Um, in the middle, I'm showing a circular polarization state. And on the right here, I'm showing uh, elliptical polarization state. 
So circular polarization state and linear polarization state is a special case of the elliptical polarization state. When the phase difference between the two uh, orthogonal uh, waves uh, is either zero or pi, um, you will end up with a linear polarization state. If the phase difference is plus minus pi over two and the amplitudes are the same, then you will end up with a circular polarization state. In order to visualize and uh, understand uh, the polarization, um, a Poincaré representation is used. It, it's a 3D representation of any state of polarization. Any state of polarization can be represented with a point on this sphere. Um, the other term that's very important is the degree of polarization, and it, it defines uh, it's defined as the portion of light that that's Polarized. So it's the ratio between the power uh, of the polarized uh, sig uh, fraction of, of, the, of, the, of the signal to the total power. When the degree of polarization is zero, uh, we call this is unpolarized light. And this is an example uh, of a, a natural light that's coming from the sun. Um, if the degree of polarization is one or 100%, this is called fully polarized light, and anything in, in between called partially polarized light. And there's another thing um, is the observed uh, DOP over uh, a certain period of time. When you use a scrambling technique, scrambling is taking a 100% linearly polarized light and changing the set of polarization very quickly on the, on the Poincaré sphere. Uh, the time average can be close to zero, depending on the detection speed uh, of your uh, detector. So polarization, again, is very important. And there are multiple polarization-related issues um, in, in fiber optic systems. So let me introduce these. Um, the first one that's very important, polarization is time varying. So it's not constant, it changes over time. And that's mainly because of uh, external, um, um, external factors and internal factors. Internal factor is the imperfections of the fiber optic and the asymmetry. And the external factors can be temperature variations or uh, external stresses. So polarization, changing randomly uh, over time. And um, when they looked at the, the rate of change in, in polarization in, in uh, standard fiber optic uh, fiber, um, they found that it follows the relay distribution. Um, what are the polarization related parameters that are very important to understand and measure? The first one is polarization dependent loss. And it's the difference between the maximum insertion loss and the minimum insertion loss as a, that, that become a, a result of the changes in the input polarization state. So different polarization states suffer different losses. Um, and the ratio between them is the polarization dependent loss. Uh, polarization mode dispersion is when different polarization states travel at different speeds and the uh, differential phase between them, uh, differential group delay uh, is the PMD. Uh, polarization extension ratio um, is the ratio between the power on the um, desired uh, principal set of polarization to the other orthogonal polarization uh, principal set of polarization. So in a lot of applications, in order to uh, remove polarization dependency, um, they would like to use linear polarized light all the way in, inside their system. Uh, as an example of this is using polarization maintaining fiber. However, because of the imperfections in the fiber, um, some of the power will leak to the orthogonal state. So uh, the ratio between them is the polarization extension ratio. Uh, also, this polarization dependent gain is when the, the, the gain uh, of the amplifier is polarization sensitive and the ratio between the maximum gain and the minimum gain is the polarization dependent gain. So all of these polarization related uh, parameters um, are very important to understand and, and manage and measure. Um, the other important thing to, to notice is for coherent detection receivers, uh, those receivers are supposed to compensate for uh, PMD, uh, mitigate PDL, and also do the uh, SOP tracking and demultiplexing. So polarization is very important um, in, in this application. 
any high PMD, any high PDL will, will cause issues and reduce the, uh, the maximum number of data that can be uh, transmitted. So there are here at Luna, there are multiple instruments and multiple technologies um, that we use to measure polarization related parameters. So I will give you a few examples of different instruments and different um, ways of measuring the same parameter with different uh, methods. The first one is the state of polarization. So um, the most common uh, method that are widely used is the stocks parameter method. So uh, uh, customers or designers uh, use four powers, uh, P1, P2, P3, to measure um, the power of the signal at different, uh, using different orientations of the polar polarizers. And by doing this, we can construct the, the stocks parameter. And from the stocks uh, vector, I'm sorry, you can construct the, the stocks vector. And from the stocks vector, you can uh, plot that on the Ponky sphere. So you can easily know what the state of polarization is by, by, by measuring those four powers. Um, it's, it's worth mentioning that there are multiple technologies to, to, do, the, to do this. There's the spatial stocks uh, parameters method, which is I'm shown here on the slide. And this can be terminated or can be in line. So there are a few instruments in the market that use the terminated version. So they use all the power um, from the signal to, to measure those four uh, powers. And so they have better sensitivity. Um, in, 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 at Luna, we have the inline design, and this is useful for certain applications when you don't wanna interrupt your signal, you just wanna uh, tap the light and measure those uh, four stocks uh, parameters. The other technology is wave plates, and it can be manual wave plates, uh, or it can be um, uh, digital magneto-optic crystals. So here um, at Luna, we have the solid state digital um, <coughs> uh, rotation of magneto-optics to, to find the state of polarization. Degree of polarization <coughs> is the, uh, um, is, uh, is very important because it, it can affect the measurement accuracy in fiber sensing. It can uh, affect the OSNR in telecom applications. So measuring the DOP with high accuracy is very important. There are uh, three technologies uh, that we have here at Luna to measure the degree of polarization. We have the polarimeter method. So by uh, knowing the four, po four powers and construct the uh, stocks vector, uh, and by knowing the stocks parameters, we can measure the DOP with this uh, equation uh, I'm showing here. The second method uses polarization scrambling. Uh, by scrambling the polarization in front of polarizer, uh, you can measure the p power at, uh, when it's maximum and the power when it's minimum. And the difference between them will give you the portion of light that's polarized and you divide it by the total and you can tell the degree of polarization. Um, Unfortunately, this method um, may not be too accurate because um, by scrambling the polarization, you wish to hit the um, the state of the the right state polarization that will, uh, will cause them the power uh, max and power minimum. Uh, so there's guessing there's more uh, scrambling time needed in order to achieve this and also to achieve high DOP accuracy. Um, the other method that we use uh, that we offer is is using the uh, minimum and maximum search so instead of instead of randomly changing the state of polarization we use an algorithm to find uh, the minimum and, and, and maximum state that will be responsible for achieving the power max and power minimum. So we, we use a feedback signal with a, a high speed polarization controller and our own pattern patented algorithm to find those two uh, states quickly. So it's, it's more deterministic and uh, it can achieve high accuracies for high DOP and low DOP. Um, the polarization extension ratio measurement methods, we have uh, three methods. We have the polarimeter method. Um, so for the polarimeter, polarimeter method, we need to um, uh, stretch the fiber or hit the fiber to introduce phase delay between the two orthogonal 
components and by doing so we will the polarization will trace a circle on the Planck sphere and from this equation we can know the uh, the radius and we measure the pr um, so the, the, the bigger the circle the, the lower the pr and if, if it's only one point then it's infinity so that's one method and also we have the rotating polarizer method and in, in this method we are rotating the polarizer um, uh, 30, 60 degrees and measuring the power real time. And by rotating the polarizer, we can hit the polarization max and polarization, uh, uh, the power max and power minimum. And the ratio between them is the uh, PR. The third method is more complicated and more sophisticated and gives you more information. Uh, it's based on white light interferometer and uh, we launch a signal along the slow axis and because of the uh, external stresses or imperfections in the fiber, the power will leak and we introduce uh, a phase between, the, uh, between them and we interfere those peaks and we get a plot of distributed information. So the unique thing about the distributed polarization crosstalk is the ability to give you distributed polarization crosstalk along the fiber and by accumulating or integrating those peaks, you get the PR of any section within, within this uh, scan. Uh, PDL measurements, we have uh, three methods. We have the matrix method and we have the polarization scrambling and minimum and search method. Uh, it's very similar to the uh, degree of polarization method, method, uh, method measurement methods. Um, the, the difference here is not using a polarizer. So the polarization scrambling, we scrambling the, the polarization and um, we measure the power max and power minimum and the ratio is the PDL. And again, for the minimum and search method, we are using an algorithm and deterministically find the, the, the two states that are responsible for P max and P minimum. The other method that's also widely used and it's very preferred for multi-port applications is the um, uh, matrix me method and we have two uh, methods we have John john's matrix and we have molar matrix um, so in this application you will need a, a tunable laser and you need a, a, a high repeatable uh, fast polarization state generator because for the Jones matrix you need three states and for the molar matrix you need at least four sometimes customers use six states and by building the the, the Jones and molar matrix um, you can measure the uh, PDL and PMD. Um, polarization management technologies so here at Luna we use uh, mainly the fiber optic squeezing technology and it's based on applying a force or stress, um, transversal stress on the fiber, and that will introduce a linear vibrations, and we can deterministically control the state of polarization. Um, I'm sure there are other technologies in the market. Um, each has its own um, advantage and, and disadvantages. Um, about the advantages of fiber squeezing, it's all about um, uh, lossless design. So in a lot of measurement systems uh, or system integrators, you worry about power, you worry about PDL, PMD, reflections. And because this technology uses uh, just a piece of fiber, you're not really introducing any losses in, in, in your system. So that's, that's the, the advantages of, um, of fiber squeezing. We have the manual polarization controllers that's shown in the, in the first picture, and we have the electrically driven uh, polarization controllers. Um, you can have up to six channels per, per device. Um, polarization scramblers, a lot of customers um, normally ask the question, how can I use polarization controller to do scrambling? Is it the same product? Um, it's not the same product because each one is uh, designed for specific um, uh, application. However, polarization scrambler is a polarization controller plus an algorithm. Um, if you develop your algorithm to cover the sphere uh, evenly, uh, fast, then you can achieve the scrambling that you are interested in. And uh, we have multiple technology and multiple methods and multiple algorithms 
to um, control this, the rate of change. So it's not just random scrambling. We, for certain applications, you don't need a discrete random scrambling. Sometimes you need a small transitions uh, <clears throat> or a small trace on the pump sphere as you scramble and you need to evenly cover all the, all, all the sphere. And in certain applications such as uh, high speed um, uh, coherent detection receiver stressing, uh, you need to achieve the, the worst case rate of change. So you don't wanna waste your time um, trying all the rate of change. You wanna get the worst case quickly. So we have a mode or a probability distribution function tailored for, for that specific applications. Um, also, we have polarization stabilizers, and polarization stabilizers or trackers are polarization controllers plus an algorithm and a feedback signal. And here I'm showing uh, a basic uh, building block for a polarization tracker where the, the signal is coming in, we have polarization controller, we have polarization monitor, and by monitoring the polarization, we can um, pass the feedback and control the, the control uh, the polarization controller again to optimize the uh, output state of polarization. In a lot of applications, you want a stable state of polarization at the output, or um, after your uh, module, you have a system and you want to find the best uh, polarization state that will result in achieving a minimum or maximum feedback signal. So if you want to optimize your feedback signal, either minimum or max, you can use um, the polarization tracker. And that's why we offer two uh, configurations. We have the external feedback uh, polarization tracker and we have the internal feedback. Uh, polarization switch uh, in um, fiber optic system design, especially for fiber sensing, customers use um, uh, detect the measurement uh, on two orthogonal polarization states uh, in order to mitigate some polarization sensitivity in, in their system. So we offer a polarization switch. Uh, it comes with either uh, plus minus 45 degrees or plus minus 90 degrees, uh, depending on the input polarization state. However, um, this is not based on fiber squeezing, it's based on magneto-optic crystals. Uh, so we apply current and that will generate uh, elect uh, electromagnetic field and that will rotate the state of polarization. So it's solid state, uh, fast, I think 100 microsecond switching speed and it's for this purpose. Uh, we also have polarization generators and we have two, two technologies or two methods to do so. We have the magneto-optic crystals uh, such as the PSG. Uh, these are deterministic polarization state generators, but they are limited only to six states. So we can only generate the, the standard known six states, the minus 45 degrees, plus 45 degrees, uh, right uh, hand circular uh, or left hand circular. Um, so the unique thing about this technology is the repeatability of uh, hitting the same state over and over. And this is good for building um, uh, test and measurement uh, systems. Um, we have um, the module version and we have the instrument version, which we use this technology to measure PMD and PDL. The other technology is based on fiber squeezing, but we need uh, uh, more components. So we need a polarization controller and we need um, a polarimeter to, to provide the feedback signal to the, to the polarization controller. Um, so this one lacks the accuracy of the magneto-optic crystals. However, uh, this is a deterministic and it can generate not just six states, but any state on the Poncosphere. sphere. So um, um, you can generate any state if you know the, uh, the Cartesian coordinates or the spherical coordinates, you can enter those into the, the system and you can reach any state on the Poncosphere. sphere. Um, we are here at the uh, live demo. So I talked about the functions that we can do with the polarization. So I have a quick video that will describe the uh, PSY201, which is a, a complete polarization uh, synthesizer analyzer system. So you can do polarization control, polarization scrambler, uh, polarization, stabilization, generation, and monitoring, or all with one instrument. Um, so this is the test setup. We have a laser centered at 1550 nanometer. Uh, we are using a manual polarization controller outside uh, just to show um, 
how that PSY can measure and plot the state of polarization. So we'll manually adjust the state of polarization using this module. So in, in, in this demo, we are showing here the polar view software. Um, it can show the state of polarization on the pump sphere or on the uh, uh, stocks parameter oscilloscope mode. It shows the real-time information about the stocks parameters, power, and degree of polarization uh, real-time. And here, I'm adjusting uh, the, polar the state of polarization at the input by uh, rotating and squeezing the polarization controller. And as you can see here, we can um, control the state of polarization and we can observe real time the changes on the pump sphere. And uh, with this module, we can achieve and reach any state of polarization. Now, the PSY offers manual polarization controller as well, and it has four channels. So we can select any channel, and you can see here by applying voltage and we can uh, determine the resolution, you can change the state of polarization on the pump sphere. By a combination of two or three or four channels, you can um, uh, reach any state on, on the pump sphere. Okay. Um, the third function is a polarization state generator. Um, here, I'm, I'm, I'm generating a linear uh, circular polarization state, which is shown at the top here. If you know the Cartesian coordinates, the stocks. Uh, uh, parameters. If you know the spherical coordinates of your desired state of polarization, you can enter this and the unit will generate the state of polarization um, very quickly. So here I'm changing to a linear polarization state. The other function that the PSY, it, it's a multifunctional polarization controller. So the other thing that it can do is uh, tracing a circle on, on the pump sphere. Uh, for example, if you define the, the principal set of polarization, um, the, the unit will generate a complete circle around that state of polarization. And this is very useful if, for example, you want to um, change the polarization linearly only on the equator. So you can define your set of uh, principal set of polarization and you can change the, uh, uh, the polarization on the, on the equator. Um, the fourth function is polarization scrambler, and again, um, it comes with a predefined uh, probability distribution function for the rate of change. In this example, we are showing a triangular mode, which has a smooth traces on the pump sphere, and you can uh, change the, uh, the, the scrambling frequency um, uh, because it's variable. Uh, the fifth function is polarization tracking. And uh, again, for this PSY, uh, we have a polarimeter that will feed back the signal to the polarization controller. Um, if you enable uh, the polarization tracking, um, if you disable the polarization tracking, here I'm showing that I can change the state of polarization at the input uh, and I can see the changes. But if I enable the tracking and uh, try to change the state of polarization again, um, you, will, you will see that it's stable, it's not moving. So here it's activated. And if I remove the activation, tracking activation, now I can change the set of polarization. So again, in this demo, um, we were able to um, demonstrate the five function, polarization related functions uh, using just one instrument. Uh, with the PSY, you can do polarization controlling scrambling, uh, tracking, uh, stabilization, and monitoring all at once. Um, let's go to polarization mitigation techniques. So using those functions, um, you, can, um, you can mitigate polarization sensitivity in your measurement system if you are developing fiber optic sensing or if you are developing an, uh, an OCT system for medical applications, understanding uh, polarization and controlling polarization uh, is very important. Um, so I'm, I'm showing here a few examples. Um, uh, so again, you can use a scrambling, switching, controlling, stabilization, even depolarization to achieve um, your desired performance, um, depending on your application. So in optical coherence tomography application, it's an interferometer. Um, 
So the, the basic concept is uh, you split the signal into a reference uh, signal and sample signal, and the reflected signal from your sample will interfere with your reference arm, and you will generate an interference pattern, and from that you can tell the location and build a 2D or 3D image of your sample. Um, it was found that if the degree of polarization is less than 100%, then the, the depth of resolution of your measurement is highly dependent on the polarization mismatch. And also, um, before, any uh, inter uh, before you interfere to signals, it's highly desirable that you, the state of polarization of the two signals are aligned. So that's why using um, uh, inline polarization controller it can be manual or electrically driven in, uh, in one of the arms to match the polarization set and the other arm will, in, will highly improve your measurement accuracies. For fiber optic sensing applications, uh, specifically here I'm showing uh, FBG-based um, uh, sensing application, the sensor can be polarization sensitive and um, uh, customers uh, can um, qualify those FBG senses by using the term polarization dependent frequency shift because um, the reflected signal uh, frequency and wavelength is highly dependent on the input state of polarization. So customers might use uh, fiber optic depolarizers uh, to completely depolarize the signal or use an active polarization scrambling to uh, average out the polarization sensitivity. Um, so these uh, two, um, these two uh, solutions can be used in, in this application. In high power laser applications, um, uh, because there are multiple uh, stages of amplification to reach the desired level, power level, um, those amplifiers can be polarization sensitive. Uh, customers can use a manual polarization controller to, to align the set of polarization to the uh, PSP of the amplifier to achieve the maximum output. But if the polarization itself is changing and it's not, the, uh, it's not fixed, then uh, you need an active alignment of polarization. And that's why um, polarization tracking is, is one of the solutions. If you tap the power after the amplification stage um, and you feed back the signal to the polarization tracker, the polarization tracker will actively align the state of polarization to either maximize or minimize. In this case, obviously, you would like to maximize your feedback signal. Also, the quality of the uh, cutting, uh, especially for um, uh, especially for a curved uh, surface, is is very important, and it's highly dependent on the polarization uh, state. Um, it was found that the best uh, um, quality is achieved when the uh, when the polarization is uh, perpendicular. To the uh, to the cutting vector, so if you use an active polarization controller to to align the set of polarization, you can achieve the best quality. However, the efficiency is lower, and some customers uh, decided to use circular polariz polarization state in order to um, uh, basically take advantage of the. Um, a smoothness and high quality and, and efficiency at once. And uh, there's a paper here you can review uh, that talks about this application. For uh, test and measurement uh, component testing, um, the presence of PDL in your test setup also degrade the measurement accuracy. Um, so customers uh, use high-speed polarization scrambler to um, uh, scramble the polarization to mitigate or reduce the, the effective PDL in, in, in the system. Um, as an example here, we have a graph where um, if you scramble your polarization at 700 kilohertz, and if you use a, a detection bandwidth of 10 kilohertz or less, you will guarantee achieving a degree of polarization that's 5% or less. Um, so this is a, a good selection of the scrambling frequency and the detection speed. And by getting uh, a 5% degree of polarization, the effective PDL in your system will be um, uh, lowered. So this is very important application also. Um, here in coherent detection uh, systems, 
um, the good thing here about this application is that everything is done uh, at the receiver digitally uh, using the algorithm um, um, of the Korean receivers. However, in order to stress and uh, characterize and the polarization related functions in the coherent receivers, you need uh, polarization uh, emulation instruments. So you need a high speed polarization controller or scrambler. You need a, a high speed polarization, polarization mode dispersion emulator and you, you need a high speed polarization dependent loss emulator. And we, ha we have those options to uh, stress uh, the coherent receivers for, for polarization performance. Um, a lot of these questions comes more often um, from our um, uh, engineers that work on coherent detection receivers. Uh, I just it's 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 worth mentioning that the PMD, um, even though the PMD as a value uh, is existed, if for example uh, if you use a, a, a section of PM fiber, then the DGD is known and it's fixed. However, the effect of the PMD on the signal is dependent on the, the input state of polarization. So the DGD is fixed, but the effect of PMD on the signal is different from one case to another, depending on the input state of polarization. If the state of polarization at the input is aligned 45 degrees from the slow and fast axis of your DGD um, crystal or your PM, PM fiber, for example, um, this will cause the worst effect on, on your signal because um, the power will equally split between the slow and fast axis. And if the DGD is higher than the bit with it, then uh, the, the two signals will have no relation, phase relationship. So the, you will see two peaks with two powers and it causes the degree of polarization to equal zero. So this is called the worst effect, which is 45 degrees uh, uh, input state. The best effect uh, or the best scenario is when the set of polarization uh, is either aligned with the slow axis or the fast axis. In this case, even though the DGD as a value of that piece of uh, fiber um, is known uh, to have, for example, three picoseconds, but the effect on the signal is zero. So there's no effect on PMD on the signal. Uh, and that's why in the polarization multiplex uh, applications, it's highly recommended that you scramble the polarization so that you yeah, you you hit those those scenarios basically. Uh, again, PDL is also highly dependent on the state of polarization, and um, um, I, I have here an example um, to show the effect of PMD. If you have a, a power is with ten milliwatt, and if you scramble the polarization before your DOT, you will experience uh, power max and power minimum depending on the state of polarization. So the, ra the ratio between those uh, values is giving you the PDL of 1 dB. However, this is the case if the polarization is randomly changing or if you are uh, intentionally scrambling the polarization. But if you have um, a, a, a PDL artifact and, and your polarization at the input is not moving quickly or you want to know the effect of PDL, uh, we have different scenarios. If, if, the, if the state of polarization is aligned with the maximum loss, then you will get uh, the power minimum, which is the worst case. And if the polarization is aligned with the minimum loss axis, uh, then you will get the maximum power, power, uh, um, power output, and that's the best case. Anything in, in between, the power will fluctuate between the P output max and P output minimum. So, um, the effect uh, of PDL is dependent on the input set of polarization. Um, as a summary, uh, so the, the whole concept of uh, polarization is the oscillation and it's very important uh, to understand the polarization behavior in your system in order to achieve the best performance and the best measurement accuracy. Um, we have multiple technologies uh, and functions that we can uh, used to in order to mitigate polarization sensitivity in your system. You can, you can either depolarize your signal, control your signal, scramble the signal, or track your signal, or switch your signal, uh, uh, the set of polarization. Um, we here at Luna, we offer a, a complete uh, polarization uh, management product portfolio. So 
we offer all polarization modules and instruments to achieve all polarization related functions. Uh, so whether you are working on a system um, uh, um, fiber optics sen sensing uh, design, or if you are building at these stations, um, we have products that can help you um, control the polarization in your, in your system. Uh, also, we have multiple methods and technologies to measure uh, all polarization related parameters. Uh, so we can measure PR, PDL, PMD, uh, SOP, and DOP. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, so here, this is the end of my uh, presentation. I'm sure you have a lot of questions and uh, we'll take them one by one. Great, thanks Waji. Uh, very informative and comprehensive overview of polarization. Uh, as Waji mentioned, we will go ahead and take some questions. Uh, again, um, just use the Q&A box in your control panel to submit any questions for, for Waji. And as you do that, a reminder that uh, we will send an email with information on accessing uh, the recorded webinar, as well as a copy of the slides and uh, some of the Q&A transcripts. Okay, looks like we have some good questions coming in. So we have, um, yeah, a question about Washi. Uh, so one question is with the manual polarization generator. Uh, do you have to worry about micro bending? Um, yes, and uh, we are, so for the manual or for the electrically driven, um, uh, we measure something called the activation loss, which is um, basically changing the, uh, trying all scenarios of the maximum uh, voltage applied on, on the fiber and the maximum force. And we measured the, the intentional loss variations and we've, it was found to be 0 0.01 uh, DP, so it's it's very low. Okay, great. Another question is, um, I assume this is not for the manual controller, but how fast um, is the polarization controller? How fast can it stabilize changes in input polarization, say due to wind or vibration? Right. Um, so let me. I'm gonna quickly grab the spec because the, the number, it's not on the top of my head. Um, it's about, uh, okay. Uh, we can track the state of polarization as fast as uh, 47 pi per second. So anything, um, up to 47 uh, pi per second, we can stabilize it. Okay. okay, very good. Could you, um, you talked about depolarization versus scrambling. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe more, what is the difference between the two? Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the scrambling is to take 100% polarized light and changing the state of polarization quickly um, to the, to the point that um, the, it's much faster than the detection speed. So the detector will see multiple points uh, over a certain period of time that will emulate um, a very low degree of polarization. So it depend, for the depolarization, uh, completely depolarization is, is, is a little bit different. That one is passive design that uses fiber to uh, kill the phase difference between the two orthogonal states, so it completely, completely depolarizes the signal. And depending on the system design requirements, either uh, the packaging, the, the, um, the, uh, the DGD uh, that can be introduced into the system, uh, whether there's a power requirements, uh, whether uh, uh, the coherence length uh, of, the, of the light source is also very important. Um, depending on those factors, you can select either you, you either prefer to completely depolarize the signal or scramble the, the polarization. But the, the goal of both of them is to reduce the degree of polarization to close to zero percent. Okay, very good.
So when monitoring the polarization to uh, perform active feedback to stabilize, as you described, um, is how much intensity do you require to make a good enough measurement to perform the stabilization? Um, is there a minimum level or is that something to be concerned about? Um, so the external feedback voltage needs to be between zero and 4.6 volts. And uh, yeah. Okay. And the input has to be more than minus uh, uh, 18 dBm. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that answers it. In the OCT application, uh, the laser is tuning within a range of na uh, nanometers. Will the polarization controller also change its parameters during the laser tuning? Yes. Um, at some point in 2010, I believe we developed a polarization stabilizer uh, swift source. So as you sweep the wavelength, uh, the, the polarization will, will, will drift. And if you use an active uh, feedback signal, you will be able to stabilize the polarization as you tune your wavelength. So that's a very important um, application for sure. Okay. We had we had a product where we discontinued it, and the, the main goal was to introduce a very stable polarization output. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Mitch, can you describe a little more about activation loss? You mentioned activation loss? Yes. Uh, so for activation loss, um, it's the change in insertion loss as a result of operating the, 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 the instrument or the model. So it's an additional loss. And the way we measure this is by uh, applying zero to 150 volt, which is the, 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 which is the, 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 the voltage range that can be applied to the, to the squeezer. And from this, we can tell the change in the insertion loss for each channel. And, the, and by uh, adding all these values, we come up with the activation loss. For all, the, all of the optical heads, the polarization uh, fiber squeezing based optical heads, um, we have um, as, a, as a standard specification, it's uh, less than 0 0.01 dB. However, in certain uh, units, uh, if you um, basically select the best performance, we were able to achieve up to 0 0.005 dB. So it's a very low activation loss. And this is one of the advantages of fiber squeezing. Great. Yeah, I think you may have answered this as part of your other questions, but what is the, in this, in the uh, stabilizer, what's the function of the microcontroller? Um, so, in, so by measuring, so by comparing the actual polarization state with the, with your desired or reference polarization state, you will use your algorithm and feedback signal to actively change the polarization in order to reach that state. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Several questions here. Uh, this is a basic question. You mentioned that a laser is an example of a fully polarized light source, but can a laser can a laser be unpolarized? Uh, for example, a fiber laser. Um. So if you kill the coherence between uh, the two orthogonal states, you will be able to um, depolarize the signal. And we use the interferometer technique. Uh, so if you have 100% polarized light uh, with high coherence length, um, we were able to depolarize lasers up to five kilometer co coherence length. Uh, and that, we do this by introducing a phase shift between, by basically splitting um, the, the polarization to two orthogonal states and we change, um, the, the, we introduce a phase shift between them that's uh, more than the coherence um, length 
And by doing this, we kill, we kill the, uh, we introduce a random phase shift and that will kill the, the uh, will reduce, will cause the polarization to be close to zero. Okay. Very good. What scrambling mode is recommended for PDL measurements? Yeah, we get this question uh, very frequently. Um, so if you go to the concept of PDL measurement based on scrambling, you are actually trying to reach all possible states um, in order to uh, ensure or hopefully reach the state that will cause the power maximum and power minimum. Um, so that's why it's highly desirable to use uh, a polarization scrambler, scrambler with a smooth uh, trace. In, uh, so it's continuous polarization, not discrete. If you do discrete, um, maybe you hit two points and the actual one is in between. So that's why smooth and continuous polarization scramblers are highly desirable for PDL measurement. Okay. Very good. Let's see. Don't know if you'll know this one off the top of your head, but what is the wavelength resolution and speed of the PDL measurements? I think it's available with these products. Okay. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to. Yeah, I will, I will need to check the spec sheet because yeah. it, it, it's different from one technology to another. We have the OCA 1000. With, uh, the resolution is a function of the external tunable laser that will be used. So we, we only offer the optical engine that will do the measurement, but you need to combine this with the tunable laser. So we don't have spec for that one. It's, it's based on, um, on um, the tunable laser that you select. Uh, for the PSGA, we use um, a stepper tunable laser, and it's ITU grid. So the resolution is the um, C-band ITU grid resolution. However, the, the most comprehensive and most accurate uh, sophisticated instrument is the OVA, and it uses an internal tunable laser or swift source laser, and I, I can't remember the uh, wavelength resolution of the OVA. All right. Yeah, and again, we'll um, we'll provide a transcript script of these questions with with answers. So we'll uh, we'll include that one for sure. All right, uh, looks like we're covering most things. Um, here's one. Uh, so what what is the difference between the DGD one thousand and the PMB one thousand um, emulators? Okay. Um, they use different technologies. The DGD-1000 um, is based on interferometer. So we split the polarization into two orthogonal states and we delay one of them in order to introduce the uh, group delay. And that's why it's, um, it's continuous DGD emulator. Uh, it has higher or uh, more, more range, so up to 400 picosecond and we can cover C, L, or C, L bands all at once with one instrument. So th these are the advantages. So, and it's only uh, first order PMD. Uh, the PMD 1000 uses magneto-optic crystals and it's digital. So we have dig uh, magneto-optic crystals sandwiched between uh, DGD crystals. And by special combination, we can generate specific DGD value but the unique thing about the PMD is the speed. It's 10 times more faster than what's in the market. <clears throat> uh, it can generate any state from zero to 180 picosecond in less than one millisecond, but it's digital. So it's discrete points and it can generate first and second order PMD, not just first order PMD. Okay. Speaking of magneto optical crystals, uh, someone mentions, points out that there is hysteresis in magneto optical crystals and asks, how do you compensate for that influence during measurements or is it uh, embedded in the error specification? Uh, okay, there's what, I'm sorry, I didn't catch. Hysteresis. Uh, Hysteresis. Um, 
I'm not aware of that because the, the magneto optic crystals is a solid state and we apply magnetic field to rotate the polarization. Um, I know that those crystals are highly wavelength sensitive and temperature sensitive, but in our, um, in our design, we have a thermostat that will measure the temperature accurately close to the optical head. And we have formulas to accurately compensate for um, the uh, any changes caused by temperature or, or wavelength. So that's why they are highly repeatable and can be easily calibrated to achieve a, a very deterministic uh, SOB values. And in fact, they are widely used um, now to build a, a multi-port PDL measurement based on molar matrix, for example. All right, very good. Okay, so I think we're about out of time. There's a few questions we didn't get to. Again, we'll include those in our documentation we distribute after the webinar. Uh, thanks again. Anything else you'd like to add, Waji? No, I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to join this webinar. I hope um, I gave uh, a basic uh, introduction to polarization. And uh, if you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to email me or uh, send uh, your question. Uh, I will definitely go over all questions and uh, answer these um, and uh, publish them. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Waji. Thanks, everyone. Again, we appreciate you being here today. Take care and we'll see you next time. Thank you.